everybody! Welcome back to Higurashi no Nakakoroni. Uh, as always, I am joined by David and Kayla, who are going to help me voice act through things. Hello! I am Kayla, <laughs> and I've been told that I have to be aggressively <laughs> positive tonight. So hi! Aggressive positivity, fuck yeah! On brand! Aggressive positivity! Woohoo! Yeah. <laughs> I'm David. No <laughs> You're very quiet, so I'm going to turn you up. Uh, oh, yeah. Get do, 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 do. Get turned. Hold on, hold on, hold on. <laughs> uh, I mean, you're almost all the way up again. Okay. Okay. I think I got I you. I to tell you, it's only with you. I got you turned up all the way. Hmm. Okay, okay, okay. Switch headphones again, but then you're gonna hear the ambient sound. Nah, it's fine. We'll just turn. I just turned you up. I'll also turn that up. You have been. You have been turned, David. Turned. <laughs> Such turned. Absolutely turned. Ow! All oh, the turn. <laughs> all right, all right, all right. So, we get to start up the uh, third arc. And shoot, I forgot to. Uh, Update a couple things, so let me do that. Uh, reading aloud. I gotta update Hell my. Oh, yeah, starting the third act. I'm excited. Whee. Apparently, the curse is gonna kill more people, so we get more murder. Yay! Hooray <laughs> um, for murder. murder! You know, I'm, I'm kind of pulling that it's not Hot Photographer this time. Uh, but I feel like he's just destined to die every time, so. <laughs> he's destined for, for murder. Destined for murder? Does he die the same way every time? You'll have to see. <sighs> Sus. No, 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 no sighing today, David. We, we're being aggressively positive. Hell yeah! I love fucking mysteries! <laughs> you can be aggressively positive with signs. That's great. No. Impossible. Absolutely impossible. Fuck that noise. <laughs> okay, okay. So, with that said, uh, as usual, no spoilers for, for David and Kayla. As they continue the third part of this question arc, there might be spoilers from the previous two arcs. So, uh. Yeah, I mean, we're probably happens. gonna mention. We're probably gonna be. mention things that have happened in the last two arcs yeah. at least once. As usual, trigger warning for violence and disturbing imagery as we go along. This is a, um, sort of a supernatural murder, gory mystery sound novel that we'll be reading through. So, um,. Well, let's get started, shall we? On the curse killing arc, chapter three. Let's go. Or like Hell arc yeah. arc three. Chapter one. <coughs> Tato, Tatari Garoshi, the shortest scenario? <laughs> the difficulty is the worst. You will huh? Has there been <laughs> one of these streams for be every able arc? To make conject conjectures? Wow. Not even be able to make Has there been one of these screens every arc? Yes. I have never. What? Oh. <laughs> Man, curse or coincidence. have never seen them before. Are you sure? Because I, I have never seen this. Yeah, they've had these before for the other ones. I'm pretty sure. Maybe we just uh, didn't see them and it was only for you. Mm, I don't think so. Well. <laughs> David, we've discovered. Oh, what was on. that baby's <laughs> laughter sound? No. That's how that goes every time. No. What? The snake no. in the well was happy, for it did not care what was outside the well. The snake in the well was happy, for it had not to do with what happened outside the well. And you were happy too, for you did not know what happened outside the well. Frederica Burncastle. Well, that sure seems like language after that. It's Welsh, maybe? This is a work of fiction. Maybe. All right, we're going back in time. Again. 1983 in Japan. Aw, oh, yeah. Better than the 70s. <laughs> it was a very humid day. Not even a slight breeze was blowing. And it, it had been an unpleasant summer. One that wasn't only hot, 
but swelteringly so. There were various articles of clothing hung out to dry in the messy apartment windows, but the lack of wind evoked an impression far removed from coolness. In fact, it only felt more oppressive. Apartment? Where are we? There were crooked houses and apartments lining the narrow, twisting road. In addition, there were planters and flower pots whose contents were beginning to rot as well as bicycles and cars on the sides of the road, making it even more cramped, more oppressive, and all the more sweltering. Wow, this is making me feel even worse in the heat than I already am. <laughs> I feel that. Thank you, Higurashi. Yeah, right? I appreciate it. I'm so sorry. Nobody who was in this place at the time was visiting it voluntarily. But in spite of what everyone might expect, a single motorcycle came rolling in. I continue to wonder, where the fuck are we? A lone motorcycle, which couldn't be called meat, even as flattery, pulled up to a two-story apartment complex and stopped there. Maybe Rhino's place? A man, <sighs> fairly old and wrinkled, stepped off. When the housewife, hanging out the laundry, noticed him, she called out. I mean, I didn't even think that Hinamizawa had apartments. Right. I thought it was that kind of town. Well, hello there! It's quite hot today again, isn't it? Oh, you have got that right! I feel like I'm gonna boil out here! <laughs> Alright, landlord, I didn't think that would be the first thing you said. Ah, sorry, sorry. The fluorescent lights, right? I completely forgot! <laughs> no, not that. Don't you smell it? There's a terrible smell about. I've been smelling it since this morning. Ah, I'm sorry, that's my feet. Wait, <laughs> what's this? It reeks! Did the sewers get backed up again? Do something about it, landlord. I've had to keep my nose plugged all day long. <laughs> You'd still look plenty lovely plugging your nose, my dear. <laughs> Never fear, landlord is here. God. I'll call okay. somebody and you won't hear back for three weeks. <laughs> Fuck. This is Japan, though. It was Who, an knows? Drink Who knows? Channel running her behind the apartment. Can't make these jokes with Japanese stereotypes, though. Oh, I don't right. know any of them. Yeah. <laughs> The lattice from which it flowed was stuffed with branches and fallen leaves, and when filth got cut up in them, it created an awful stench in the summertime. Could you tell the municipal office about it? The drain will end up buried at this rate. Well, yikes. It's completely blocked. It'll start back up if you put it with a stick. The man crossed the fence over the drainage channel, and picked up a filthy drying pole uh, sitting nearby. He must have planned to stick it into the drain and clear it out. Oh, is he gonna die? Oh wait, landlord, stop that! If you mix it all strange, if you do, ha do that, it will smell terrible! <laughs> it smells if it's clogged, and smells if it's mixed. Which should I choose? <laughs> he shoved the drying pole into the filth in the lattice. Of course, it did nothing to help the uh, accumulation of waste. Typical landlord. Yeah, it's a dead cat. This is the health center's job. Cats and dogs smell awful when they die. A bamboo pole's not going to do much good. Garbage bags, old clothes, there are all kinds of stuff in there. And is that a duck I see? Well, of course it stinks. The nerve of some people. The drainage channel was already unsanitary. There was a little more garbage at this point. The stream of such imprudent people was never ending. And now this channel had turned into a garbage dump. 
When he poked the pile of old clothes floating in the sewage, a black cloud of smoke floated out in the water. What the fuck? The two of them grimaced at the terribly bizarre and repulsive sight. Yeah, we've got maggots, eh? Oh. Someone must have thrown kitchen waste in. What? Landlord? What's that? What? Just more garbage. Uh, landlord, that's... that's... Huh? Huh? Ah! Maybe like police people? Let's see. Wait, let's see. Probably. Probably. Oh, hello, good work today. Ah, what a terrible stench. Hey, somebody cover this thing with a tarp. It's in plain sight of the two floor houses. Identity of the in deceased unknown. Sex female. Age estimated to be late 20s, early 30 30s. Time of death about two or three days ago. She's probably abandoned after death. Naked, too. Figuring out who she is will be rough. Wait, are we just starting with Creepy Girlfriend's murder? Ooh. Mm -hmm. Also, my stream, my computer is really struggling to keep up with the stream. Oh, yours Sorry. too? Mm. I'm not. Oh, no. Oh, if it's, it's both like of us, then it's probably on, on Flint's end. I don't know. I don't know what would cause that. Uh. Hmm. Take it too. Figuring out who she is will be rough. Contact the community division and ask if anyone's gone missing. Alright, let me uh check this really quick. Uh let's try this again. They probably weighed her down so she'd sink. Then the weights came off and she floated to the top. But why in a drainage sooner of all things? Would have been better under an overpass or in the mountains, you know? I don't want to win outside our jurisdiction, right? But it looks like they never wanted to hide the corpse at all. You seem further away now too, David. Do I? A little bit. Did they do it uh, so she wouldn't be found so she would be found as a warning or something? Slice in her stomach definitely wasn't from a fish eating her. Am I closer now? She was a cut open bit. and her insides were dragged out. They really made a show out of killing her. Doesn't the Chinese mafia do these sorts of traditional punishments? I should get some in section four if he's had any trouble with Yakuza. On it, sir. Oh, what a terrible way to go. Hey, don't her innards poking out like that sort of look like the salad soba you can get in Kyoto? <laughs> Damn, Damn, that's morbid. Maybe if you stuck chopsticks in, noodles would pop out. <laughs> Damn. See? What the fuck, Japan? Damn. Ugh. But please oh give me a break. My God. Wait, he, did <laughs> he really? The blood splash effect, too, God. going with it. Oh, I love it. <laughs> Her intestines were pulled out and her ears and nose cut off. That's definitely not how I want to go. Her fingers are in a bad state, too. There are long nails stuck in all of them on both hands. This oh. is somebody who got murdered. Oh, yeah. With the torture chamber. Oh, okay. Yeah. But is it creepy girlfriend? Oh, and they cut off on that because they assume we'll realize what it means. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Solid. Okay, so that's definitely Murder. somebody who got murdered in the torture chamber, I guess. Mm-hmm. And now we're never gonna see a mur ne another murder for, like, a few times. <laughs> well, we get to have cute anime adventures with our friends in the board game club now. Hey! <laughs> the most relaxing time during the school day? Lunch, for sure. 
Everyone brought their desks side by side like always, and we all ate together. Aww. Wait, Even me on? Gonna... <laughs> oh. <laughs> <laughs> no, 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 she's not crazy anymore. We've had Rena, right. we've had me on. Even I'm Rena feeling... and me on. Who do you think it's gonna Probably be this Rika? time? Rika. Well, Rika died the last time. She got murdered. So did Satoko. Yeah, so I'm thinking Rika is the one gonna go insane now. Hmm. Ah. Do you think Rika? Okay. Rika's gonna murder everybody? Yeah, yeah. <clears throat> I mean, she yeah. has to eventually. There's eight of these fucking things. <laughs> okay. Uh. Well, I do kind of want to know what crazy Rika looks like. <laughs> All right. Oh my! Mion san, if I might say, your lunch looks quite appetizing today. There are so many different things. It's wonderful. You sound so far away, Gala. Why? Uh, is it is your thing using so the wrong mic? Things. No. Mm -hmm. go check, so. Is it just me, David? She does. <laughs> okay. It's not just you. Cut out. Hmm? Hmm? Is that any better? No. What mic are you using? My Yeti. Uh, it might be facing the part that's actually like taking in info might be facing away from you. Turn it around. Like, talk into it close to your face while you're kind of, like, moving it. I don't really know what you mean. Like, you know how it has, like, the uh, 360 microphone? Like, pick it up, put it near your mouth, and kind of, like, turn it so you're talking into different pieces of it. And we can tell you when it sounds the loudest. Yeah, so you just <laughs> want me to move... The mic. Yeah. Until you find something. This is actually already better. Yeah. I'm literally holding it up to my face, so that would that's be not okay. Happening. That would be why. Um. Hmm. If you can get closer to it at any point. <laughs> or turn up the volume on it of the gain on it, technically. We're having fun while learning, chat. Ah, <laughs> oh, sound Hell engineering. yeah. Learning is for cool people. <laughs> Don't let anyone tell you differently, because they're a giant bitch if they say differently. Damn right. Oh, so that sounds really Hell good for you, yeah. David. Hmm. Sorry? Your mic sounds very good right now. I just turned up- ah, fuck. I just <laughs> turned up the gain some more and definitely <laughs> didn't accidentally punch it. <laughs> yeah, turning up the gain definitely helps. Oh, headphones, you piece of shit. I need you to actually give okay, okay, me okay. audio. Did you turn up the gain? Yes, yeah, just- uh, how- I, can, I don't know what I'm doing. Turn it do to the maximum. Yeah, turn, turn okay. up the gain. There you go. I did it hey, uh, good. exact other way. Yes, okay, I'm gonna much turn. Better. Perfect. Ah, oh, the game was at zero then. <laughs> Aha. That'd be why. <laughs> that would do it. Okay. There you go. A line the is Tuko yours. The chan looked at Mian's lunch, shouting gladly. Let's have a look. Whoa. I just packed in some leftovers from last night. All the elders were having a drinking party at my house yesterday. I managed to nab some of what they didn't eat. <laughs> so that's why they all look like snacks you could have sake. I think this is KG. Hmm. They're but leftovers. Mere scraps of food. But when arranged in a bento box so cleanly, they look impressive. It looks like part of a full-course meal at a high-class restaurant. 
People seem to decide if they like things mainly based on their first impression. So I thought maybe the taste of a bento would be proportional to how pretty it was when you opened it. You may seem un unrefined to me, Ansan, but you are positively splendid at arranging food like this. The room is nice and tidy, too. Michan is a lot more organized and polite than everyone thinks. Hell yeah, Mion has lots of secrets about herself. <laughs> <laughs> it's all the same once it's in your stomach. Teichi, you fool. I'd have thought Mion would say something like that, but to think she has this kind of taste. Hmm, you can't judge a book by its cover. Mian was careful in everything she did. She never misstep, faltered, or messed up. I see. She is her club president, after all. You know, this is nothing to scoff at, too, Rena. Your crab, uh, Kamaboko, Kamaboko flower, flower is very pretty. You know, Rena, your lunch always has, like, an art to it. Like, it has rabbit-shaped apple slices and carrot flowers and stuff. Red Espanto wasn't all about taste. It was like, hmm. Like she always put her heart into it, or something. It wasn't just good. It made your insides all nice and warm. <laughs> Thanks. It's not quite as good as Michan's, but I wanted to make it really cute. How... Cooking isn't about skill, it's about love. In that sense, I don't even come up to your feet. Love, huh? Yeah. Just by looking at her bento, I can definitely feel that Rana put her heart and soul into making it. That's what her bento was like. The taste isn't all that counts for a bento. How it looks also matters. I suppose we must learn from this too. Hmm. So let's see Satoko and Rika's up-and-coming bento. Well? Ta-da! Whoa-ho-ho-ho! Yesterday our neighbors shared some meat with us, so we ended up grilling it for our bento. These ones, too. They had such an impact! They're bursting at the seams of grilled meat! Hey, Tails, how you doing? Damn. At a glance, it was too impactful for a girl's bento. But when you thought about eating with all your friends, it brought more than enough color to the table. Wow. At first it looks like the kind of crude bento that a jock would eat, but there are so many different things in here. Like boiled spinach and soy sauce and stewed hijiki. Hey, Kachan. You're really good at this kind of unaffected cooking, huh? Hey, glad you're good, Tails. How you doing? Ah, uh, what you been up to? Uh... Yep, I think Freaka Chan will make a great wife when she grows up. I have a tight hold on my future husband. The fuck does that mean? <laughs> my husband for Freaka Chan, huh? You're like ten. At first, that sounded appealing. I mean, Why yeah, but she is the worse? she's the Miko of the of the family, remember? Like and the head. Yes. She's so a, like she's also the last like living person of her family, isn't she? So like yeah. she has to be get married and do ch and have children. Like yeah, it's still fucking weird that she's ten I mean, and saying yeah. she's got a lock on her kit on her husband. Not denying that, hmm. it did, but. I felt like a married wife life with her would be anything but normal. Hell yeah, Keiichi. Not endorsing the weirdness. <laughs> we love really, to see it. Everyone was amazing. They're all so young. And yet they're all capable of cooking for themselves. I would sort of cook whenever I went camping with my family. But making lunch every day was a level I could, definitely couldn't reach. I could only really cook in my spare time. When I thought about it like that, it really made everyone stand out more. Frankly, I respected them. Aw, oh, 
Hell yeah. We love to see it, Keiichi. Mm -hmm. You actually respecting other human beings <laughs> and being good friends with people. Mm -hmm. That's why the huh? murders are so terrible. <laughs> I feel like maybe this doesn't only apply to other people. What are you talking about, Keiichi? No. Come to think of it, this morning, when I was eating breakfast half asleep, I think my mom was saying something really important. Uh. Uh. Ah! What the fuck is going on? With a hysteric <laughs> round, I suddenly stood up, startling everybody at once. Way to go, Keiichi. <laughs> Including job, us. Keiichi. Including us. <laughs> yeah. You've confused everybody, KG. Good job. <laughs> what, what, what's wrong? Wrong. <coughs> It'll make us choke if you shout so loud like that so suddenly, you know. This oh. face coming out of your nose, Satoko. Oh, <laughs> I hate it when that happens. Oh. Me too. I'd forgotten all the stuff about cooking for yourselves. It applied to me, too! Do you, you forgot to cook. Lunch, you forgot to... <laughs> Keiichi, your mom and dad need to go to Tokyo again for business. Hmm. Yeah? Oh, sleepy. Your dad's mentor uh, fell over ill right before an event he was taking part in. It's a very important event, and they need someone to fill in. Well, dad does what he has to do for his job. Yum, yum, yum. So your dad and I, you see, we need to go to Tokyo as fast as we can to help with the event. We might have to stay there for a few days depending on what happens. That sounded annoying. <sighs> While we're gone, we won't be here, so you'll need to make your own meals for yourself. Are you okay with that, Keiichi? Oh, I'll be fine. Humans can do anything when they're desperate. <laughs> <laughs> Is that so? That's a relief. <laughs> you can at least cook rice, right? And you can make miso soup as well. They can just buy some side dishes and you'll have a meal. A meal? Yeah, I can cook, ri cook rice with my camping kit. Never used a rice cooker before. Yum, 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 yum. I've only ever made instant miso soup that you make in a pot of boiling water, too. Well, I'll think of something. This is fine. <laughs> Well, that's some real confidence in yourself, KG. We love to see it. And in the human spirit. KG well. can cook for himself <laughs> like I can cook for myself. Good to know. Uh, it's instant ramen. Instant ramen. If you can cook for yourself, then you don't need much money, do you? No eating out. It's too expensive. You're at the age where you should learn about cooking and personal finances now, after all. Yep, yep. I'll goodbye. Um, goodbye. No, I won't! What was I thinking? I was half asleep. I made such crazy, empty promises. Just like the manga characters. Oops, that. Wait, didn't give me an end thing there. Hold on. Uh... <laughs> the, just like the manga characters always do at a time like these. I bet over backwards and scratch fiercely at my head. Oh my scratch, 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 scratch. Oh God. What actual human does that? Huh? Keiji kun, your parents sure have it rough. <laughs> anyway, you need to keep things in order while they're gone. Anyway, food, food. My parents aren't here. I do make it all myself, you know? This is a huge emergency. Should you not simply give up and cook for yourself? keiji san did you not make a fabulous curry dish for the curry party previously? Okay, so the curry party's happened. Uh, listen here. My mom taught me how to cook that curry when we camped, and that's the best I can do. I can't eat curry three meals a day. You're not I mean, the teacher. It's just... 
What? You're not the teacher. <laughs> yeah, not the teacher. It's just junk <laughs> food in the first place. That's a take, all right. Uh, There's no nutritional balance whatsoever, and it's just completely... And then the teacher smacks him. It's a stupid... Shh, shh, shh. Me and, so and Satoko put their hands over my mouth. <laughs> a moment later, the door rattle opened, and Chie <coughs> Sensei, a known curry maniac, suddenly poked her head in, dun, dun, dun. as if knowing they were speaking about curry. Did I just hear somebody bad mouthing curry? <laughs> no, 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 we didn't, didn't say, say anything. <laughs> Everyone's faces went totally white, and they all shook their heads in denial. Eyes rolled over the classroom. Her glare wasn't just a teacher's ordinary stare. <laughs> Is that so? Impressive. Must have been the wind. <laughs> Chia Sensei gave one more look around the classroom. Then closed the door and went back to the teacher's lounge. I may have been shouting, but for her to hear it from all the way across the hall in the teacher's lounge? That teacher is terrifying. The Skyrim card approach to things must have been the wind. <laughs> <laughs> oh my god. Kei Chan. Amazing. You can disparage other foods all you want, but you might want to stay away from curry. At least as long as you live in Hinamizawa. Uh, okay. I'm sorry. That's what I said. But still, I can't have curry for every meal. A cup of ramen is only good because you can only eat it once in a while. If you ate it for every meal, you get bored of it pretty quickly. Rice and miso soup and a good side dish? Yeah. That's what a Japanese table should look like. Why can't you just try to cook for yourself? Rice... Rice you make yourself is really good. This old man thinks it's more a pain than good. But experiencing it every once in a while might be nice. That's right! Life is all about experiences, right? But when you cut your fingers or burn yourself, it's so sad. So very sad. With everyone encouraging me like this, I started to feel like maybe I could do it too if I tried. Though approximately one person didn't sound like she was encouraging me. <laughs> Cooking is a skill I, I'll have to learn at some point. Since I want to live on my own one day. Maybe learning now wouldn't be so bad? I'm pretty uneasy about it, but... You're right. I'm gonna understand how to cook a few things around here. Then I won't be in good shape the next time our club does a cooking showdown. Oh! <laughs> you are correct! That clever trick of yours is the la in the last curry contest won't work every time, after all! What did he, what did he do again? He, like bribed two underclassmen to give him their stuff, I think. And yeah, then, but still got and, more, didn't and then somebody ruined his curry and he pulled some bullshit. Yeah, he pulled some, like, uh, like, uh, onigiri, I think. Oh, right, right, the onigiri. Gotcha, gotcha. As if scorning me, Satoko so ridic ridicules my comeback from a hopeless situation in a certain do-or-die curry showdown. What are you so oh. relaxed for? You relied on entirely on Rika back then, didn't you? What did you cook at the time, exactly? You put a bag of salt in Rena's curry. A bag of salt in Mion's rice. And you flipped over my pan! I relapsed into my grudge over the last curry showdown. For now, I called my unquellable unqu anger by pinching Satoko's ears. Ow! My attack was 
because that's what they were doing for club. I may not look like it, but I can do a little bit of cooking. Can you know? Even when you couldn't peel one carrot during the showdown and had to get Rika to do it? Don't be so daft! People get better every day, you know? If you think I'll always be a crummy at cooking, then you're quite mistaken. Right, Rika? I have to watch or else I get worried about the pot and the flame. Keiji, this is Sometimes. not very aggressive positivity of you. <laughs> <laughs> you're not cooperating with me here. Sometimes you forget to turn off the gas, too. <laughs> Everyone burst into laughter. I shouldn't be an issue with cooking. Even I would never do that. hear that from someone who eats nothing but cup ramen. But, but, Satoko can cook pretty well for herself, you know. Rena, it's fine. You don't need to force yourself to cover up for her like that. No, she's not trying to cover cover for anything. It's just that Rika-chan's cooking is by far the best out of all of us, so hers doesn't stand out. Satoko has mastered the basics too, right? At the very least, she can cook rice and miso soup. Well, she can't quite tell the difference between cauliflower or broccoli, though. Star. <laughs> but they're both the same anyway once you boil them. Oof. Did it go erupt it into anger, making her two fists and swinging them above her head. Everyone left a lot after that. <laughs> Laughter sounds. Laughter sounds! Ah! The others don't matter! I cannot stand being laughed at by you, Keiji-san! <laughs> yes, perhaps I do lag behind everyone else in cooking in terms of cooking skill. But at least I'm confident I'd never lose to you, Satoko. Not to you, at least! <laughs> well, at least you have a little bit of self-worth, KG, I guess. He says as he doesn't know how to make rice or yeah, miso right? soup, and she does. <laughs> well, what was that? You have the gall to say you're confident. That's what's daft here. I might not seem like a good cook, but I take turns with Rika, you know? I can cook just fine for myself, thank you. I see, I see. Good for you for being able to cook. I'll buy some candy for you as a present later. I patted Satoko on the head while I made fun of her. Satoko seemed to know I was making fun of her. Too, since she went, since her face went bright red very quickly, and steam started to pour out like she was kettle. Ah, you don't believe me, do you? Anyway, anyway, I can cook far better than you can, Keiichi-san. I see. Then if you can tell me the difference between cauliflower and broccoli, I'll believe you. Come on, let's hear it. Oh, don't don't fake cook, girl. <laughs> Togo, what the fuck, KG? Mm, um, the green one is broccoli. Or, no, no, the yellow one. Cauliflower is red, blue, green. Ah! Come on now. What color is broccoli? She had it right, though. Oh. It's not red, blue, green like a television. She did. Well, then she changed her answer. Come on, say it. Say it. Ah. It's Gagey. It's 
Satoko can cook just fine without knowing what color broccoli is, right? Good for you! Good for you! <laughs> Stupid oh, no. Keke! <laughs> oh no, no, she's actually crying. Um, was nothing to cry hysterically about. She's so goddamn cute. Come KK. <laughs> I stroked her head as hard as I could. Ruffle, ruffle, ruffle. Ruffle, ruffle. Hmm. If you're going to act so Ruffling. smug, then you can surely show us something better than Satoko. Remark me on. Give me just a slightly mean smile. Oh, sorry. Actually, well, I had no confidence at all in my cooking, but the situation carried me along, and I decided to deliver an impressive declaration. Oh no! Oh damn! You ready Wait. for this impressive oh, declaration, come on, guys? Daniel, <laughs> no. Uh. Just you wait. Tonight, I will make the best darn meal you've ever seen. I'll even make a little too much and pack it for lunch tomorrow. You'll be so surprised you'll fall over! Oh, KG, you have made a mistake! Oh no. <laughs> oh no. Oh no. Oh no, we never expected this. Uh. I mean, I expected KG to do something stupid, because that's like the plot of this game. I didn't expect this particular brand of stupid. <laughs> that sounds like fun. I can't wait for lunchtime tomorrow. Just you wait, Henry Higgins. <laughs> we get you petting me on the head. Her words of can't wait sounded so transparent. <laughs> Rena's excited too! I won't laugh no matter what you make. <laughs> oh god. <laughs> Alright, so maybe I'll go all out on my bento tomorrow too. Then let's do this. Let's have a bento showdown tomorrow. As a club activity, of course. And we'll throw in a pun punishment game too. My, what an ingenious idea that is. How is that, Keiichi san? I'll give you one chance to back down. Sayoko. What? Wiped her. It's a toko. That's weird. That was a typo. Uh, yeah, that's I was, yeah, I said it and went, wait a minute. No, wait. <laughs> Satoko wiped her tears and snarled at me as if this was a chance to turn things around. She certainly looks vengeful. She looks like she's about to punch someone. Uh, maybe, just, just maybe, this is bad. <laughs> I feel like maybe the conversation is getting pretty out of hand. Oh, if I apologize, now is my chance. But what came out of my Keiji Maibara's mouth? was a statement so reckless, it even frightened me. <laughs> oh no. <laughs> yeah, you're on. <laughs> My bento tomorrow will knock you right out of your shoes. Hell yeah, I'm gonna destroy you. <laughs> Whoa. 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 Everyone raised their voices in surprise <laughs> at my bold, confident reply. Ah. Now I've done it. What have I done? I'm so irresponsible. Yep. Yeah, you are. Yes, you are. So, Mianzan, what sort of fantastic punishment game will we have for, to play if we lose? Mm hmm. The Toko grinned fearlessly, as if to say that it was already decided that I'd be playing this said fantastic punishment game. <laughs> Let's see. 
Okay, how about this? Whoever loses tomorrow's bento showdown during lunch break tomorrow has to go up on Chie Sensei as she's eating in the teacher's lounge and say bad things about curry. Michan! That that's how how terrifying! Everyone pale and gasp at how truly terrifying the punishment game was. Was it even a game at this point? <laughs> Chia Sensei, such a the deadliest game about curry that she ris risked her life for it. And to to go up to her and start saying bad things about curry? What kind of fate would await us? Just trying to imagine it was scary. <laughs> And as everyone looked blankly amazed at the terrifying punishment game, Rika Chun spoke. Tomorrow's contest will be decided by skill. Rena, Emion, and Satoko. Everyone nodded deeply in agreement. Hmm. Although Keiji-san's problem might be his own dinner tonight, rather than tomorrow's bento. <laughs> ha! How disappointing that you can't witness what an amazing dinner I'm going to make tonight. I'll let you have a glimpse of it in my bento tomorrow, so look forward to it! That is quite a lot of grandstanding. You do know what will happen if you come to us with something terrible, right? <laughs> I just can't wait how much trouble you'll be in with Chie Sensei tomorrow, Satoko. That's not how sentences work, but you did your best, bud. <laughs> hmm. Yes, I can't wait either to see you, Keiji-san, groveling before her and begging for forgiveness. Seeing it all with tears streaming down your face. Yes, I can just see it now. <laughs> <laughs> what was that? Yank. Ah! Stretch. Both of us were on the verge of tears, pulling on each other's cheeks. Stretch. <laughs> Trying to muster all your desperation by placing yourself in a predicament. Kei-chan, that's so manly. That isn't very manly or anything of the sort. It is called being reckless. You can't even cook well. Stretch! <laughs> Rena believes in you. I'm looking forward to your wonderful bento. I'm looking forward very much to seeing Keichi tomorrow as well. Their expected gazes were painful. I was just trying to tease at Toko a little. How did it come to this? Because you're a macho schmuck, Keiji. Stop being such a chad. <laughs> <laughs> I've never heard macho schmuck before. Oh, really? No. Oh, God. Yeah. KG, KG tried too hard to be a Chad. <laughs> Is that what that's used for? <laughs> I don't People know. trying too hard to be a Chad? It's a good phrase. <laughs> Macho schmuck. I'm so glad you're hanging out with the kids these days. The kids in the VR. Learning all the slang <laughs> so you can come back and teach it to me. Yeah, I'll teach you, how, teach you all the slang forehead. Hmm. <laughs> Thank you. That very pog champ of you. <laughs> Yeah, you better look forward to it. <laughs> <laughs> look at this papeg. <laughs> uh, how this how am I able to say such reckless things? What a I'm an idiot. Papeg you are, K K Post ripperonis in the chat for K Jam. <laughs> Bento's out for Kji. <laughs> <laughs> 
<laughs> Sentient Bento, oh no. <laughs> um, what the heck is gonna happen to my dinner? And the Bento showdown tomorrow? Oh, what the fuck? Why won't it give me the end? Hold on. There you go. Extreme contrast between my outward bravado and my internal screaming continues the hot and humid. <laughs> Literally, my everyday life. <laughs> oh, yeah, we're in June. Hey, look at that. Hey. <clears throat> that entire day. <coughs> Up until school was over. The whole time. My meal tonight. My bento tomorrow. The only things on my mind. And now that I thought about it. It made mom seem amazing for planning three meals every day of the year. I've complained before about having the same meal in a row once in a while. But now I know how rude that was. More importantly, what am I gonna do about the punishment game tomorrow? Besides that, what am I gonna eat tonight? Way to fuck up, forehead. Uh. <laughs> hey, chicken. Hey, chicken. Huh? Oh, sorry. I was just thinking about how I need to be pog champ today. <laughs> You're my little pog champ, KG. <laughs> <laughs> oh my god. I feel like that's, you know, if this was set in modern day, I feel like that's absolutely something Mion would say to KG. Oh god. Oh hell yeah. Yeah. About what absolutely. to make tonight? Or about the bento showdown tomorrow? Because, you know, you're going to lose. Hit the mark. I couldn't find anything to say. My facial expression made it pretty obvious the fact that she hit the mark. <laughs> For tomorrow's showdown, I think that if you do your best to make a bento, you'll be fine. There's nothing superior to a bento you tried really hard to make all by yourself. Today's, tomorrow's showdown is one thing, but what about dinner tonight? I might suddenly get food poisoning. <laughs> I couldn't make any more bluffs. I exaggerately droop, drooped my shoulders and heaved a sigh from the bottom of my gut. I laughed in a shrill way when she saw me do that. Gagekun, <laughs> don't you have any confidence in your cooking at all, do you? <laughs> so I've been found out. Ugh. Of course I don't, Rena. If it looks like you can't do it no matter how hard you try, you can always give Rena a call. Uh, really? But only if you try really hard at first, okay? You can't rely on others without first struggling yourself. Rena seemed naive, but sometimes she was instructive. She didn't just spoil people unconditionally. Rena always seemed like an adult at these moments. Hmm. If I absolutely can't do it, I'll call you. Though the chances are extremely high. Go for it! Yay! You are grandstanding so much to Satoko-chan <laughs> that you have to try your best! <laughs> hey, uh, about Satoko, how good is she at cooking? You know, Keiichi, we support people at least trying to stand up for the bullshit they spout and not run away from it, so yeah. the smallest of points for you. Mm. <laughs> we support that in this house. <laughs> He's at least better than you. <laughs> Oof. 
That was so direct. I feel like an arrow just pierced my heart. <laughs> it hit me pretty hard. What's up? Right in the oof. forehead. <sighs> you were making fun of her a lot, too. Maybe you should have to struggle just a little bit, huh? <laughs> uh, yeah, uh, you're pretty mean. You don't get to talk, KG. Rena isn't... Rena is all cute, all cute. <laughs> uh, now that I provoke Satoko that much, I couldn't just make some crummy bento. Which you will. Uh, I can't believe how loose-lipped I am. Okay, bye. Good luck on the cooking. Not in anything else, you know. Show huh. so everyone that you can do it if you really try. Yeah. I wave my hand absently in response. Leaving me with the words of encouragement and a few pieces of super beginner advice. Rena disappeared past the trees. Oh. And scene. And scene. <laughs> okay, Chi. This is like the middle school version, or the, I guess, high school version of doing sober what you promised to do drunk. Yeah. <laughs> be a good life lesson for him moving forward. Fine. I'm desperate, alright? I may not know the ABCs of navigation. I neither have a sea chart nor a compass. What? <laughs> but still, what idiot is taking on the ocean of great cooking age alone? And his name is The Idiot. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, <clears throat> Keiichi Maibara. Mega Chad. Oh, yeah. Thought he was a mega schmuck. Well, I guess we'll see if he's a mega schmuck or just a Chad. <laughs> Let's Macho go. Schmuck. Time to cook. My enthusiasm. Uh, it doesn't give me the thing all the time anymore, and I don't like is it. Is peerless. If energy and recklessness was all it took, I could take over the world. However, there are plenty of things in the world that can't be achieved with resolution alone. And cooking was probably the top contender. Wait, do they have the- they do have the hype music on right now. Yep. <laughs> mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Therefore, even if it was a hastily prepared knowledge, I wanted something to help me. I kind of want to get- I need to find this music. Um... I'm gonna grab it and just start using it for streams and type myself up. Yes. <clears throat> I made up my mind. <laughs> I'm gonna use the super hype music and fish through the kitchen cabinets. I was on a hunt for a cookbook. My mom should have a few of them. For a complete amateur like me, the first thing I needed was information. Just like he who would cross oceans needed a compass. For me, a cookbook was absolutely indispensable. Oh, here's one. I mean, that seems like a good idea, KG. It's worn out, wrinkled. It's worn out, wrinkled, covered, made it feel somehow reliable. Okay, as long as I've got this. It's the one that teaches you how to make those, like, really terrifyingly terrible, like, Great Depression gelatin dishes. Oh, oh my god. god. I remember seeing those. Those are horrifying. Uh, well, it's easier to give it a shot than think about it, right? <laughs> Anyone can concoct the tastes of a gourmet chef as long as they have a cookbook. Star. Cookbooks are great. And as such optimistic thoughts filled my chest, I flipped through the pages of this disgusting gelatin-filled pages. And I couldn't read any of it. <laughs> and it was all in Norwegian English. for some reason. Huh. 
Whoa. Why did it just go negative? Oh, now peace oh, pie by reading. <laughs> no, no. Reading comprehension, my only weakness. <laughs> it played with with technical terminology, like toys. I'm sorry, did it play with technical terminology like toys? I just couldn't see how it would actually make things. Ah, uh, you knew it all along, Keichi Maibara. If everyone could cook delicious food just by reading a book, then there would be no such jobs as a gourmet chef in the first place. First off, it calls for three teaspoons. But which spoon is that? And it keeps saying to use however much you like. How exactly are you supposed to, do, to use? Stop using some obscure expressions. Strain out the water and colander. Add salt and pepper to taste? What the heck is a colander? Oh no. <laughs> and strain it out like stretching? You can't stru stretch water droplets oh, like meat. Oh my god. Oh god. Wow. Keiji, I know you're doing your best, but oh my god. That's just oh, wow. impressive. And and besides, how much salt and pepper is supposed to that's supposed to be anyway? Aren't there any beginner-friendly guides in here? It won't do you any good to yell. Cool off, Keiichi Maibara. Think. Calmly. Calmly. Calm. Let the white light enter your navel. <sighs> For now, I'll leave the side dishes until after. The rice is more important. I have to cook the rice, or I can't start. I know a little about how to cook rice. I didn't cook it with my camping kit when camping all the time for nothing. I'll wash the rice. Good start. That should be enough water. And which switch is it? Is it this button? Oh, the lamp turned on. Yeah, yeah. Fully automatic rice cookers are one of the three sacred treasures, after all. <laughs> oh God, is this that's is that's a reference to like the Japanese like the imperial treasures? Yeah, the imperial treasures. Uh, what are they like? A sword, a mirror, and something? A uh, bell, probably. A what? Probably. That seems. A like bell, a... probably. Oh yeah. It's, Hmm. I know the two of them are a sword and a mirror because of yeah. Naruto, but yeah. uh, I don't know what the last one is. It's probably Most likely a, a bell. It's probably a bell. Now I'm curious. Yeah, that's very Japanese. Oh, wait, no, no, no. It's one of those, um, wait. It's the sword, a mirror, and uh, it's like a Tama. Like a shit. Um, what the fuck is? It's a jewel. Yeah, it's a jewel. Yeah, the jewel. It's a jewel. Like the, oh, yeah. the Tama. Oh, it's the jade, uh, basically colon. The semicolon, but the bottom half. Yeah, yeah, like the Magatama or something like that. Oh, yeah. Yeah, okay. yeah, 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 yeah. Aggressive fucking the miso soup I made at day camp was yeah. all the instant kind after all. Welcome to my brain. What? Almost one motherfucking year of friendship. Rev! Mommy! Hi. Thank you so much! Thank you so much for doing this! Woo! Rev! Present fucking positivity! Amazing. How are you doing today, friend? Thank you very, very much. Oh, man. Fuck yeah. Well, it would be fine if I just melted the miso into hot water, no doubt. Hot and sweaty mess. Yeah, that sounds about right. It's been so hot this week. Oh my god. Oh my god. 
I'll boil the water and put in the miso. Then I'll take a potato chip and eat it! And <laughs> eat it! <laughs> Uh, best part of that anime. <laughs> huh? How much should I put in? Hey, Rev, how much miso do I need to put in the water? Hmm. Let's see here. Use the, use the proper amount of according to the number of people in your tastes. Enough of the vague expressions! Ah, fine, <laughs> then I'll put in the proper amount! Oh god. Oh god. Oh. No, oh, no, it was no. not okay. It was not okay. I crushed the bag of miso in my fist and put half of its contents into the pot. Oh no. Was this really okay? No. No. No, it's not. Well, I mean, maybe no, for me. That sounds like super fucking like salty no, and I like it. No, you only put but like a little bit. You, you don't think. put even a half. Mm. 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 Got back to Hotel F from closing at NG New Jersey Ren Fair. Nice! Hey, oh, congrats! Ren Fair? Ren Fair? New Wait, Ren Fairs are starting? What? Yep. Mango Pardon starts in September! Oh, oh no. Yeah. Keiji. Keiji, what have you done? Exactly. <laughs> oh no. Oh no. <laughs> maybe, was this a little too hearty? I mean, it seems okay for me, maybe? But I really like salty things. Mm-hmm. They do say miso soup is best when it tastes strong. Come to think of it, my mom's miso soup is a little thin. Maybe I'll like it better with this much in it. Yeah, Keiichi! Experimentation is at the heart of cooking. I said it aloud as if trying to convince myself. <laughs> then convinced by my own words. I nodded to myself. Do you want to narrate, Flynn? Oh, okay. It took me a second to realize. Oh, okay. <clears throat> All right, the rice and miso soup were probably fine. Next, the side dish. But what should I make? Something I could make that would add color to the meal. Hmm. That's it. Why don't I stir fry some vegetables? You can eat vegetables raw too, and they won't die just from a little bit of fire. I was so cute then, not realizing the level of my thoughts had fallen from what would look great in a meal to what would be easy to make. There were quite a few vegetables in the refrigerator. Hmm, oh, what kind of vegetables go in a stir fry? Bean sprouts? Cabbage? Chives? Onions? Can you put cucumbers and lettuce in? For now, I grabbed a nearby cutting board, <laughs> cut them into chunks, and toss them into a wok. Oh no! <laughs> it's gotten pretty exciting. Oh, by exciting, I mean terrifying. <laughs> That's what she said, yeah. This is the true worth of men's cooking. Hey, this is actually getting kind of fun. All of a sudden, there was a pile of vegetables in the wok. All right, next is the salad oil. Glug, 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 one in the salad oil. It'd be more exciting if I filled it to the brim. Oops, oh, a bit leaked no. out. Oh, no. Oh, no, Keiichi. Well, no point in worrying about something so minor. Oh, God. Keiichi, you're going to burn your house down. <laughs> yeah, right? Holy shit. Jenner, hey, how you doing? How you been, friend? Good to see you. Hi, hi, hi. Oh, oops, that's not supposed to be Angie face. This is my half. I'm I gotta do happy face. It's still like, <laughs> it's still learning. It's the machine learning of faces. <laughs> Those darn machine learning algorithms. Good to see ya. I know, right? I, I yeah, I need to teach it more. Hot damn, not bad. Good, 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 good. Yay. The ridiculousness of uh, Keiichi fucking up cooking. <laughs> what did he do to the rice? I missed it. Um, I don't think it's... I don't remember what he did with the rice. I know he, like, put way too fucking much miso in. And yeah, I saw that part. I don't remember. Oh, well, I guess we'll find out what he yeah, fucked up with the rice. <laughs> or maybe we won't, because he's going to die from burning his house down. <laughs> yeah, most probably. Because he just completely filled his wok <laughs> with oil. <laughs> Okay, let's turn on the heat. Whoop! <laughs> Whoosh! There goes the fire! The salad oil filling the watch, the brim <laughs> caught fire, and the flames reach up to the sky! Amazing! Maybe I can be an iron chef too! I... 
Oh no. You know, if you oh, work no. really hard, if you work really hard and don't die for burning yourself to death, maybe. Maybe. What if I'm really good at cooking with Ooh. fire? We're going to die. Those words were spoken by delusion. I was saying something outrageously careless. When the words came out, they sort of convinced me. Oh no. <laughs> oh no. <laughs> yes, I am an iron chef. Ow! <laughs> right as the crazy pillar of flame started to burn the ceiling, I finally realized that the fabulous cooking before my eyes had culminated into an actual life threatening disaster. <clears throat> Yes. Wait, what? Could I? Could I have been doing something insane? <laughs> Force of the flame grew stronger and stronger. What? What? <laughs> what in the world are you doing? Oh, this isn't cagey. Uh, you must stop the flames this instant! <laughs> Question mark. Oh god, fifth whack. Somebody forcefully struck me in the back of the head. Oh! When I turned around to see what was going on, to my surprise, I saw Satoko and Rika-chan there. Eh? Satoko? Rika? <clears throat> As I stood in wonder at their unexpected, unexpected entrance, Satoko shoved me out of the way and turned off the gas. Then Rika-chan got a towel, soaked it in water, spread it out, and placed it over the pot. She continued to soak more towels and put a second on, then a third. Once a whole bunch were piled on, the fire finally stopped. All of it had happened in a few moments. Having avoided a huge fire by a hair's breadth, the three of us gasped for air. Wait, what are you doing in my house? You're trespassing on private property. What the fuck, KG? Even if you did just save, save my, my ass, life. yeah. Good job, Satoko and Rika. Okay. You. Saved his dumbass life. Yes, well, Keiji san, you've been caught red handed in the act of arson. It was just about to turn into a huge building fire, wasn't it? It would be very, very sad if Keiji was homeless after this. And after pretending to be an iron chef, I finally began to take in the situation. So, that was really fun to set the house on fire. No shit, you dumbass! Is that not obvious? Just look at it! The ceiling is all sooty in now, is it not? Chimneys are the only things that should be sooty! Satoko was seriously mad at me. Maybe they saved my life. No shit. According to what they said, I was so absorbed in my fiery cooking that I hadn't noticed when Satoko and Rikikachan rang the doorbell. But they could tell someone was home, so they came in to check. Thank goodness they did. If Satoko and I hadn't come, the fire engines would have been going wheel right now. <laughs> oh, Kichi-san, yeah. do you understand how serious this was? <laughs> At some point, I had sat down on my knees as I listened obediently. Oh, I'm, I'm sorry. You do saved my life. We thought we would come to see what a fabulous dinner you made. But as we thought, it's a mess. At this rate, we won't even need to look at your bento. Ugh, I mean... So you and Rika came all this way just to see what I'd made for dinner? Yeah, I can do that. <clears throat> Us being mean saved your house and your life. Is that not something to take to heart? I'm sorry, Satoko-san. Don't be such a bitch, Keiichi. Right. <laughs> At this point, having shown them such a disaster, I couldn't exactly make any more bluffs. I had been, I completely surrendered. And yet you tried really hard on the curry. Where did the Keiichi-san from back then go? Jeez! had all our underclassmen help me then. I just borrowed entire pots from the other teams. I didn't really cook anything. Keiji-san, you cheated? Jeez, you might have been doing what our club usually does, but that was terrible. 
<laughs> Pouring salt in the other team's pot seemed far more terrible to me. But Satoko was in control right now, so I couldn't respond. I obediently hung my head to her. By the way, Keichi-san, this terrible pot. This wasn't supposed to be miso soup, was it? Satoko stared at the pot, totally full of miso, with an awful expression. Ah, uh, so I really did get the amount wrong. Judging by the look on Satoko's face, whatever was in the pot couldn't be called miso anymore. Forget the miso soup. The more rice should be cooked just fine. Rice cookers these days are pretty convenient. It should be just about done. It's not cooked. See? The inside is still all watery. Huh? What? I switched it on and the little light came on. Keiji san, the button you pushed was the timer button, okay? It's set for breakfast, so it won't turn on until tomorrow morning. Uh, uh, <laughs> so then what? And I don't have a side dish or miso soup or even rice. I couldn't make anything myself. <laughs> it serves you right. So? Have you finally realized your place? Come, admit it. Say it. I, KG Mayabara, am all bark and a much crummier cook than Sudoku Hojo-san. Yeah. I'm a terrible person and a crummier cook than Sudoku. I beg your forgiveness. <laughs> Ugh. I fainted in <laughs> agony. Rika-chan popped my head, satisfied at the sight. <laughs> Toko laughed loudly in triumph. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I'm completely lost. In the end, I talked big, but couldn't make a single dish adequately. At this rate, I'll go without dinner. And tomorrow morning, no breakfast and no bento for lunch either. I didn't know how many days it would be before my parents returned, but at this rate, without a doubt. Oh, starved. Uh, uh, <laughs> Meep! Of course I'll have no bento tomorrow either! Meep! And I'm sure to get the punishment game tomorrow. Meep! <laughs> Rika Chen kept on patting my head with a smile on her face that couldn't possibly get any bigger. Oh, don't say things like that. <laughs> Satoko, completely appalled at how unsightly I looked, heaved a heavy sigh. Adult men are just so pathetic, aren't they? Come on! Please, move yourself out of the way! As I sobbed like a girl, Satoko, displeased, brushed me aside, dumped the remains of the miso soup into the sink tidy, then began to rinse out the pot. So don't worry about it, Satoko. I can at least clean up after my own mess. I couldn't have Satoko clean up the cooking utensils I'd made a mess of, but when I tried to stop her, Rika-chan pulled on my clothes. Hey, Ching, you can just be silent and watch. She grinned as she said it. Be quiet and watch? What are you saying, Rika? She meant just what she That's said. Keiji-san, just be quiet and leave this to me. Stoko turned around and declared, seeming bothered. As if to say that amateurs should keep their hands off. Her annoyed expression was a little scary. Leave what to you? Stoko didn't answer. Instead, she spun back around and began to rifle through the pots in the refrigerator. Hey, wait, don't mess with them too much. If you turn the place inside out, my mom get, might get mad at me later. Keiji, you almost burned the house down. Just, just let her do her work. Would you just be quiet already? Men aren't supposed to enter the kitchen. Rika! Aye, oh, aye, 80s sir. Japan. 
Toko snapped her fingers and Rika Chen got on her tiptoes, grabbed me by the back of my neck, and started dragging me away. Uh -huh. Leaving Satoko alone in the kitchen, Rika Chen dragged me back into the living room. Hey, stop. Rika, we go already. If we leave it to Satoko, the kitchen will be a disaster. Satoko came to see how she beat you today. It's your revenge. Revenge? Come to think of it, her face looked kind of grim. Eventually, from the kitchen, there was the sound of a faucet being twisted and a stove dial being turned. I began to hear the nostalgic sounds that made me envision dinner time. The refrigerator opening and closing, ingredients being cut on the chopping board. What did that mean? Was Satoko... Was she cooking? Ichi made fun of her quite a lot. So Joko wanted to show you that she cooked proper meals too. Ugh, just listening to it like this. There haven't been any sounds of blood spilling or bursting or explosions. At this point at least, she had proven she was a more skillful cook than me. In the cooking showdown with Satoko Hojo versus Keichi Maibara, it looked like victory had already been decided. I recalled Satoko's slightly annoyed expression from before. I was making fun of Satoko too much today, wasn't I? Is she holding a grudge? We were just provoking each other with our usual back and forth. But I also think I maybe overdid it. At the very least, I shouldn't have made fun of Satoko, who could cook for herself, when I'd never cooked other than for recreation before. Satoko isn't holding very much of a grudge. Very much. She came all the way to my house and pushed her way in. She's gotta be mad. I quietly took a peek into the kitchen. She definitely looked different than the usual bird brain Satoko. Her eyes were sharp and her movements were brisk, to the point where it was a little scary. Then she must have noticed me because she turned around and shot me an annoyed glare. I cringed in fear and hastily pulled my head back out. She's mad. She's totally mad. <laughs> ah, how she take how she take revenge on me. Uh. That's Satoko being serious because she doesn't want to fail. She isn't angry or anything. How can you say she isn't angry? I've never seen Satoko be this frightening. Keiji-san, I can hear that, you know! Sorry! I jumped at Satoko's angry outburst and faced toward the kitchen. I felt exactly like a kid who had done something bad and gotten called to the teacher's lounge, which you're going to do tomorrow. <laughs> Where do you keep the miso? The refrigerator is so big that I don't see any of it anywhere. I'm sorry. The miso is, it's on the middle shelf in the fridge on the back left of the lower rack. What, what is this? You need to close the miso package after you finish with it. It's getting the inside of the refrigerator dirty, isn't it? <laughs> I'm sorry. Before I can look for something to wipe it with, Satoko wiped it off with a wet dish towel. I swear, how are men so bad at cleaning up after themselves? I shudder to think that you'll become an adult like this. Ugh. I couldn't talk back to Satoko today. The only thing I could do was obediently lower my head and apologize. As Satoko and Nick picked and I apologized, a good smell began to fill the kitchen. This is how you prepare the miso for the soup. You scoop a little out with a ladle and break it up with chopsticks. It's important to add a little at a time and keep tasting it. Dumping the entire thing into the pot is absolutely outrageous! Ah, I'm sorry. I never paid attention in home ec class. You're pathetic! I swear! Men! I cowered her in a way of sounding muttering. If 
But looking at her like this, she seemed quite good at cooking. It had just been overshadowed by Rena's and Rika-chan's artistic abilities. Satoko's skills were clearly enough to get passing marks. Hey, if you have time to, be, to zone out like that, then you can go set the table. Rika and I will be eating too, so it's at three places. Ah, on it! I hastily took three people's worth of dishes and such from the cabinets and headed to the dining room. When I returned there, I could hear laughter from a variety show on the television. Rika-chan was sprawled down on the couch, watching television and relaxing. When she noticed me putting the dishes onto the table, she came scampering up. Dinner time is soon. Dinner at Kichi's house. Nippa! Nippa! <laughs> Mary Sponja, thank you so much for the follow. Sponja? Glad to have you. Hopefully one of those is correct pronunciation, I am sorry. Nipa. Rika, you're in a good mood. It's pretty a big difference from Satoko. Satoko wasn't in a bad mood at all. She's enjoying herself more than she has in a long time. Oh yeah, oh, the updated no. art. <laughs> Satoko's gonna be the going insane, guys. Oh boy. Oh yeah. Enjoying yourself? Seriously? It's like how she was when when her ne her Nini was with her. It really has been a long time since ha since I've seen Satoko look like she's having so much fun. Nini. What the heck is Nini? Is it a sound cats make? No, that's Nia. Hmm. Nini means brother. Satoko's older brother. Satoko's older brother. His name's Satoshi. Have you heard his name before? Satoshi. We have. Satoshi Hojo? Maybe I have, maybe I haven't. At least he didn't go to our school. <laughs> Satoshi, huh? Satoko's older brother. Hmm. That's not the first time I've heard of him. She had a brother, huh? I didn't know that. Did he want to be the very best? She like does no have one. Was? <laughs> I get it. Saying that, Rikachen grinned even more brightly and went, Nipa again. When Satoko was, was with Satoshi, she always looked like she was having fun. Oh, like, yes. yeah. She's definitely going insane. This mm -hmm. We're learning too much about her. She's going insane. <laughs> it really has been a long time since I've seen Satoko enjoying herself this much. However, I looked at it, she seemed to be in a bad mood. But her good friend Rika-chan was saying that it was actually the opposite. Was she really... Enjoying yourself? You must be remembering the time she spent with her Nini. It's hmm. nostalgic. <laughs> Just to know for people, basically, I know what happens in this story, though I haven't played these games before. I've seen the anime. Um, David and Kayla here are going in blind. So, <laughs> this is this is fun. This is fun to figure out, uh, Oh, hush. Working through stuff together. Woo! <laughs> Nostalgic, huh? Then does he live apart from Satoko? Maybe Satoko's older brother Satoshi is actually a lot older than her? He must have gone off on his own and was living by himself far away. Satoko seems like she got along well with the Satoshi person. He did. The two of them got along very well. She spread her arms wide to demonstrate the width of how well they got along. According to Rika-chan, Satoko supported her docile, slightly unreliable older brother through nagging. That was the relationship. 
I see. That's certainly applied to the current situation. We had me, unreliable, unable to cook even a single dish properly, and Satoko, who redid it while scolding me. Could Satoko have been getting a glimpse of her brother, who now lived far away through me? So she would always nitpick whatever Satoshi did, mm -hmm. but she firmly supported him, and they got along well. Today, she was the one. She suggested we should go to Keiichi's house. She said there's no way the unreliable Keiichi-san could possibly make dinner. We need to go make it for him. Then she didn't come here to get revenge or to get even or anything like that. She couldn't leave you alone. Even now, Sotoko is a proper little sister. I was an only child. I didn't know how it felt to have siblings. Of course, I've never had a little sister like Satoko, but I felt that in this moment, I was an older brother, obediently and helplessly being looked after by her. Without any teasing or messing around, I'm going to give thanks for her trouble. That's what I honestly thought. Keiji-san, do you know where on earth the ladle is? Ah, sorry, sorry. The ladle should be in the drawer to your right. I ran into the kitchen, got the ladle out of the drawer, and offered it to Satoko. It's all done. Have you put the bowls and things out? Yeah. Everything's a-okay. -okay. Then let us have our meal. Rika! It's time for your dinner! Me! <laughs> Rika's being very weird today. <laughs> Yep. He is. I heard Rika-chan's effervescent voice coming from the dining room. Satoko turned off the gas flame on the stove and lifted up the pot of miso soup. So hungry Rika just just sinks. Got it. You're right. Could you bring the rice cooker, Keiichi-san? Be careful not to flip it over, all right? Uh, right. I'll be careful. I can carry rice cookers just fine without being warned about it. I thought about replying like that, but I decided not to. No mean words or witty retorts today. Rice with steam billowing from it and miso soup, as well as a handful of side dishes. On the table was a truly firm, family-oriented dinner. It wasn't weird at all or extravagant. It was a daily meal the sort of housewife would make. It was very nonchalant and brimming with liveliness. Then let us eat. I'm glad we all got that. <laughs> At Stoko's command, Rika Chan and I both thanked her in a loud voice. I made light of you, Satoko. You've beaten me soundly. Hell yes. Admit <laughs> when you've been beaten, Keiji. Do you have a veneer of penny opinion of me now? I may still not be as good as Rika or the Renaissance, but I can cook far better than the helpless Keiichi-san. Yeah, yeah, I know better now. After I honestly admitted my defeat, Satoko's expression finally softened and she laughed with her normally loud and cheerful voice. Oh, the rice is cooked really well. Though she used the rice cooker, it tasted a little different from the rice my mom made. Maybe she used a different amount of water for it. Even so, I could feel Satoko's personality from the rice, which made it taste better than usual. The miso soup was a little on the thick side, but it was still delicious. The side dishes, while not exactly flashy, tasted great as well. It was also appetizing and I couldn't stop eating. Side dishes are well done too. Satoko, you're not a bad cook at all. I gave my honest impression without a hint of sarcasm. Satoko seemed to have been expecting some, but because when I praised her so honestly, she got flustered instead. Ho ho ho! Your praise honors me, but it's nothing so grand. Side dishes are just things I bought at the store and heated up. This and this, all I did was open the can. I can only really make rice and miso soup myself. Satoko said, embarrassed, her face a bit flushed. There was none of her normal verbal abuse or sarcasm in there either. 
I can't make anything except rice and miso soup, but when you get ready-made side dishes and put them on the table too, it turns into something fairly splendid. My mom uses ready-made side dishes and canned goods too. It's something to be so embarrassed about. This is a fantastic dinner. Aww. Mm. Kichi. Aww. I gave her honest to praise. Nice. You're being good. Holy shit. You're so not being a chad anymore. Good for you, Kichi. Yeah, he's embraced <laughs> his status as just like a normie, I guess. <laughs> I've never met Satoko's brother, but Satoshi would probably praise her in the same way. Hmm. <laughs> Well, I suppose it's enough now that you've come to realize that I can hold my own in the kitchen. Would you like seconds? There's plenty of miso soup still left. Huh? Did that brat just awkwardly change the subject? When I realized my response had been on the mark, it made me a little happy. When we eat rice like this, it's fun. Like we're eating with Satoshi. Rikachan mentions Toko's older, brother na older brother's name again. Stoko's chopsticks, chopsticks paused and she looked up at the ceiling. How nostalgic. I wonder what he could be doing right now. She had a faraway smile as if yearning for a friend who had moved away. From how it looked, I got the impression she hadn't seen Satoshi in quite some time. Stoko realized I was giving her a blank stare. Ah, I do apologize. Satoshi is my nini. Er, no! My older brother! Ah, uh, okay. I see. Nini must have been a nickname only Satoko used for him. It was funny to see her hastily deny it. I was rather surprised a person with such few living skills had the ability to run away. Well, I'm sure he'll pack up a shop at some point and return out of the blue. So he ran away. There was another story to what Satoko had said so cheerfully. The reason for Satoshi not living with her was a little serious. Everyone had been talking about it in such an upbeat way, so I continued to talk about him. Should I not have broached the subject at all? I hastily took a, lot, a look at Satoko's face after thinking that, but there was no trace of the gloomy expression I'd been worrying about. Well, he's not old enough to be dreaming of living on his own. Nini won't be able to do it for long anyway. He has no endurance. As he may not look it, but he's very... Persevering. Persevering person. He's a lot more persevering than you think. Rika, you always take Nini's side right, side right away. You're a little too nice to him. The Toko is just too harsh on Nini. You should treat him more kindly when he comes back. Satoko and Rika-chan's views regarding Nini, aka Satoshi, were parallel to each other. But I could easily tell that both of them really liked him. They were so optimistic, too. Even though he had run away from them, it was like they were going to see him again next week. Satoko and Rikuchen both liked Satoshi even now, and waited for him, believing he would surely return. I've never met him, but I know for sure that this Satoshi person was a really good guy. I thought Satoko would be deeply hurt by her brother running away, but she had already overcome that. She was still being the energetic little sister, always full of vim and vigor, as if to say that her brother could come back at any time he liked. I thought that Stoko didn't think through anything, and just frolicked and played practical jokes every day, and that was it. But she was really... Yeah. Hmm? Why are you petting my head? I roughly rubbed a hand through Stoko's hair. I misunderstood you, Stoko. I didn't know you were this level-headed. Stoko seemed to think I was making fun of her and tried to bat away my hand. But then she saw that there wasn't even a trace of malice on my face and obediently granted me the head. Yep. Satoko's so level-headed. She sure is. I I've been level-headed from the start. I was just playing pranks on you because you would always do it to me. There was a usual pro provocation, but I decided not to buy into it today. <clears throat> You're right. You were just doing it to go along with me. But you really were so level-headed. Good for you. It, is that actually a compliment? It kind of seems like you're making fun of me. I'm not trying to make fun of you at all. 
I'm seriously complimenting you. Because if I was making fun of you, Rika would be petting your head too. But that's right, isn't it? When Rika makes fun of people, she usually pets their head. <laughs> oh, that puts so much more context into Rika. <laughs> Meep. These kids for beans are delicious. Rika-chan went nipa, and her smile became even brighter. What is she on? Is she, she has to be on something. <laughs> her attitude was clear as day, but it was annoyingly cute. So both Sotoko and I suddenly burst into laughter. That laughter lightened up the table. The table itself was so dull and simple that I never even thought people could be laughing like this around it. And then I finally came to really realize something really obvious. It works better if you're laughing while you're eating, huh? Of course it is. Laughing makes it taste better. How rude! The food is good because I'm a good cook, obviously! <laughs> <laughs> this harmonious moment, this happy circle, it was completely different than spending time with family, but still somehow nostalgic. Rico? I think it's KT. Do you want to? No, but he—he he doesn't say Nini. Yeah, I think. Oh, well, maybe. I. Huh. I don't know. I don't know. I think this is Sotoko. Oh yeah, that's. I didn't say Nini. Call my brother, please. Hey, wait! You've been saying Nini that Nini this Nini that the whole time. I grinned mm -hmm. Riley and decided to just call him brother like she told me to. Yeah, that was totally, uh... Oh. That was cagey. Sorry. <laughs> Satoko, do you want to see your brother? Rika-chan stopped eating, then looked back and forth between my face and Satoko's. Satoko's smiling. She looked like she was trying to choose her words. Just from that, Satoko conveyed her feelings. Honestly, she wished she would come home right now. But she wasn't that weak. Satoshi should just do what he wanted until he was satisfied. In return, she'd let him have the scolding of his lifetime. And then she'd have dinner with him and lay out his futon for him. Well, of course I want to see him again. It's been almost a year. It's been that long already. Rika-chan smiled thinly, her eyes appearing to look far away. Well, Nini can do what he wants. It would lighten my load if he came back with more muscles and knowing how to do housework, of course. See? He said Nini again. You said it. Uh, I did not! I would never call Nini Nini! <laughs> <laughs> Things rapidly returned to the usual lively atmosphere of lunchtime at school. But nothing changed about Satoko's feelings toward her brother. She was living so bravely and so strongly. Hey, Satoshi. Your sister's trying so hard to watch this place while you're gone, isn't she? Give it a rest and come back soon. Got it? Satoko, it's time to clean up or else we'll get sleepy. It was when we were all watching TV while enjoying some tea after dinner. Rikachen let out a big yawn and then spoke. Stoko and I both looked each at the clock and noticed how late it had gotten. No, perhaps we both realized it already. We just didn't want this warm moment to end. Maybe we didn't want to say anything. Oh, this will not do. I still haven't washed the dishes yet. Don't worry about it. I can do that much at least. You made a great dinner, so I can't let you do the dishes too. Are you sure you'll be all right? When people who are not used to, to it try to wash them, the soap could make the dishes slip out of their hands, you know. Gee, she just turned into the perfect nagging little sister. It was charming and awkward. Emotions like that were all mixed up inside me. I gave her a vague, dry smile. Ichi can at least wash dishes. If you break one and hurt yourself, I'll give you pettings at school tomorrow. Yeah. Rika-chan yawned again, so wide you could see her molars. 
Is it really all right? Cage is on this pretty unreliable, despite how he looks. Give me a break. Looks like Keiichi's approval rating is a plummet in Satoko's mind. Don't worry. I'll clean those dishes up, no problem. Don't worry about it and go home. Actually, at this hour, I can't let you two go home by yourselves. I'll take you there. Let me find the key for my bike. Once you've taken us home, keiji san will be the one going home by himself. You'll be in big trouble if you get lost on the roads at night and end up in Ta Takasudo. Takasudo. There's no houses or lights out there at all. I was trying to worry about them trying... I was trying to worry about them going home, but I didn't think they'd be worried about me getting lost. Am I really that unreliable? She really is being critical, but... Yeah. This feeling I have... It's not bad. So I ended up not needing to escort them. I saw Satoko and Rika Chen at the gate. Thanks a lot for today. Thanks to you, I got a good cultural dinner. If Satoko hadn't come, Keiichi would be growling and yowling right now. Truly, it's really good that we came. They really saved me. I gave him another bow filled with gratitude. Oh, yes. I put the rice inside dishes into a container, so use that for your bento tomorrow. And for breakfast, you can eat some bread and jam. Strawberry jam and peanut butter were in your refrigerator on the middle shelf to the right. Cocoa powder, too, was in the upper right door of the out cupboard. I know all that. You don't have to go into detail. I was about to say that, but I decided to humbly listen to her. It was then that I finally realized that Satoko, who had appeared to be in a bad mood, was in fact in a great one, just like Rika Chen had said. And that thought, she nagged and that though she nagged a lot, she was very kind. Yeah, look at her face. We don't see that expression <laughs> on Satoko. No, yeah, we she's don't. actually happy. Then, or she looks night. actually happy. Hmm. We love to see it. Okay. Make sure to brush your teeth before you go to bed. You have to do oh, it for at least five oh, minutes. Oh, oh no. <laughs> I got it, Satoko. I'll brush my teeth and make breakfast for tomorrow. And I'll be sure not to forget the bento. You need to wake up earlier than usual or you won't be able to get your breakfast or bento ready, got it? If you like, I can give you a call a little earlier to wake you up instead of using your alarm clock. You don't have to go that far. I'll set my alarm clock to wake me up a little more early. Thanks for being so concerned about me. Stoko looked like she had more fault finding to do, but she stopped and, leaving me with a good night, got on her bike and disappeared down the nighttime road. Rika-chan went to the do the same, but then remembered something and came back. What's wrong, Rika? Did you forget something? Eichi, you get 100 points for today. Clap, clap, clap. Aww. Rika-chan suddenly complimented me. She clapped her small hands. What was she on about? I didn't do anything worthy of praise, did I? I nearly burned down the house, after all. Noko probably felt like her Nini had come home. I think she was having a lot of fun. Oh. Once in a while, I want you to go along with Satoko scolding in the future. Are you telling me to be like an older brother that she can scold instead of Satoshi? Rika Chen didn't say anything. She just smiled and went all Nipa Star. The Satoshi person. He has such a great little sister, so what was he unhappy about? If I were Satoshi, I would never have run away from home. Satoshi had his own circumstances, I'm sure. I didn't know what he was unhappy with, but whatever the reason, there was no excuse for abandoning Sakotoko. I hope he comes back soon. I probably can't play the role of her actual Nini forever, you know? It's okay. You were just like Satoshi today. Please do it again sometime. If that's what would make Satoko happy. I had to take on this easy role whenever I needed to. 
Oh, that's right. Rika! Stoko stopped her bike under a distant exterior light, distant exterior light, and called out to her friend, who wasn't coming no matter how long she waited. Okay, I have to go. Good night. Yeah, good night. I can't replace Satoshi, but Keishi could do it. There's one last piece of baggage I need to shoulder. Leaving me with that, Rika-chan sped off on her bike. She rode up next to Satoko, and then the two of them disappeared into the blink of an eye. Satoshi? Seriously, come back soon, got it? She come home really late. I'll punch you right in the nose. Let's try our best until that day comes, Satoko. Even if I could no longer hear the sounds of their bicycles. I stood there for a while, seeing them off. Hey. Yeah, we did it. Chapter one done. We did it. Do we have any hints? I don't New tips. We have one. One new tip. New tip. Toko's trap course. And oh, Chiba. Chiba unlocked. You're on fire. You're on fire. <laughs> oh, peace. Fire. Tip. Hmm. I know one thing for sure. Sotoko could fend off an entire army division by holing up in this mountain. I know all about it. Sotoko was one of the Soviet military advisors that gave training on traps to, do, to that one country. Stop saying weird things! Somebody help me! How did it come to this? What traps did we fall for and how did we fall for them? Mion was caught in a profusely thin pitfall she couldn't escape from and her, only her head was poking above the ground. Rena's head was completely covered by a tin bucket. She was squirming around in a vain attempt to remove it. Either of these were really funny, but that's where it ended. At least they had their feet on the ground. Hey Chen, what about you? Think you can get out of that? Hurry up and get out of here so you can save this old man. You're the one who should be breaking out and saving me, Mion. What do you expect me to do in this freaking bamboo mat? I was wrapped up in a bamboo mat and hanging two meters above the ground. Oh, what was this trap and how did I fall into it? Huh? It was the Toko! All this started when they suggested that I was so unfamiliar with nature, having grown up in the city and proposed a little exploration in the mountain. My friend doesn't really know how it, how it is back there either. Where might get lost? Oh. The mountain out back, huh? I played there a lot when I was little, but haven't gone there for years. If you get lost out there, things can get pretty dangerous. You can leave the mountain to us. The whole thing is our play playground. Isn't that right, Rika? Meow. Oh, I see. How reassuring. We'll defer to you two this time and have you be our tour guides. Wait, Keichikun. The summer vacation guidebook says not to play on the mountain because you get lost. It isn't summer vacation yet, so it's alright. We know the path, so there's no need to worry. The mountain has always been our playground. Our backyard! We know all the secret paths and shortcuts. Yes, but Satoko and Rikachan knew the path like the back of their hands. Thanks to them, we had our fill of fresh air, gorgeous views, and mother nature, like the likes of which you could never see in the village. But things got strange partway through. Oh yes! Everyone, I have something to say. From here on, you must follow exactly where I go. Huh? What are you talking about all of a sudden? It would be safer to do as Satoko says. Oh my! Hey, Michan, look at this! What is it? Should I pull it? Should I? Oh no. Suddenly. Squeak. Crash! 
When Renna pulled the kite string, a bundle of bamboo spears fastened to a tree branch came all the rain down with a clatter right next to where Renna was standing. Whoa! Whoa! What is this? What? What? Yeah! <laughs> that brings back memories. Stoka made this trap in the second semester of second grade. That was a close one. The tips of the spears are covered in dog poop, so if one of them hurts you, the wound will start to fester. <laughs> wow. When's it this turn wow. of the freaking Vietnam? Dang. According to Stoka and Rika-chan, earlier in elementary school, Stoka had been on a trap-making craze and set them up along every inch of this mountain. Ichikun, maybe it didn't tell us not to go on the mountain because we get lost, but because it was dangerous? Mian and I both nodded wholeheartedly at Rena's hypothesis. Come now. We are hurrying on ahead. If we do not return soon, it will get dark. If it gets dark, it may even become dangerous for me. But you're the one who brought us to this crazy mountain. Why was an average healthy Japanese boy like me being forced to deal with life-threatening booby traps? And then, the very moment Satoko and Rikachen got out of sight was when the three of us got, all got caught up in nice little traps together. Of course. Someone get me out! I have to go to the bathroom! Never mind that! Someone get the bucket off of me! I can't see in front of me! Ooh. Why are you howling at that? Wait, Renna, don't struggle around so much. I, I can see your panties. Oh, you, you saw? You saw? Oh, oops. It, 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 you oh, you KG. saw? Oh. oh. Whack. Uh. Isn't KG two meters <laughs> in the air? Yep. God. Of course you can see them. You may be in a bucket, but you can definitely... Ah! Punch noises. Bucket Runner was using me as a sandbag and Neon was crying. <laughs> you can't get out of the piffle? How sad. How sad. Jeez, didn't I already tell you all? You weren't supposed to leave my side. I finally had an epiphany. Satoko had been so bent on taking everyone out the mountain because she wanted to brag about all the traps she set up here over the years. You could have stopped just, just showing them to us. I didn't need to experience how it felt firsthand. Rikichan pet her three heads in sequence in an incredibly satisfied mood. And that is it. Woo, we made it through oh. chapter one. Yay. We sure did. Good times. Go save. Yep, save. Yeah, save, save, save. No let, quick loading, save. save it, save it. No quick loading. Save. We learned our lesson. Yes, got it, got it, good. Okay, okay, we're fine. Everything is fine. Hell yeah. Oh. Uh, well, I know Kayla has to go, so I think uh, we can... And you, shall we? It's okay. No worries. No, it's fine. We can uh, continue next week. I think it's oh, good. No. Yeah. Cool. Okay. I'm always free Sunday nights for these. Sweet. So we shall continue next week then. Um, Hell yeah! Woo! Good times. Thank you again, David. Thank you, Kayla. Of course. Mm -hmm. I always enjoy doing this. Always. And chat, thank you for hanging out with us for uh, chapter one of arc number three of Higurashi. Um, who can we send a raid to? Let's see, let's see, let's see who's doing shit. <laughs> Got that, got. Hmm. Uh... Man. Hmm. Huh. You know, here's somebody I haven't been able to uh, raid before. Uh, someone I've been playing uh, VR chat with in Purple Lotus, Kirby Knight, who does a lot of 
VR chat roleplay and also various things. I believe he's currently uh, doing some VOD archiving and Unity work, and then he's going to be at Purple Lotus tonight. So, uh, why not send him some love? So let me start that. There is my raid call. There's my raid call if you are subbed. Hang out with him for a bit. And again, thank you all very much. Uh, I will be back tomorrow... Tomorrow night for uh, David's d and ding of our Bardcore campaign, all D&D. &D, uh, all Bard's oh, yes. D&D campaign. We're almost, we're almost getting to the... Getting to the end. We're gonna we're gonna rock out as best we can. Oh yeah! Woo! So until then, you all stay safe, stay healthy, take care of yourselves, and take care of each other. I'll see you next time. Bye. <laughs> I'm a badass asexual polyhedral dice hunter. I'm proud to be. I'm a flying ace and fly through outer space. Hello.